and so yeah, we are live. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we're taking kicking off this new format. So um, I'd like to just start with uh, you, uh, passing it off to Yulia um, for some marketing updates. So. Um, very happy to to be here and to share just the most important bits of update I think that the community would like to hear from us today. Um, trying to share screen or uh, JD, are you one sharing screen? Okay, great. I think that the the you know, question from from the community um, kept coming with what are the um what, what proofs do we have that do, what market response do we see from um since we launched orchestration and we are happy to tell you that we've been very busy in the past two months to actually uh get builders to orchestration engage with them uh we've seen some fabulous response from the market um from both big reputable crypto interested in uh, integrating orchestration into their existing app uh, and enhancing their functionalities um, for their user base, as well as from developer entrepreneurs that are building new apps and that uh, are looking for the good blockchain to build on, as well as the orchestration features coming along with it. Um, and so as part of our builders program, we've launched, as you know, the early access program, giving a preview to futures and support, very much dedicated support to these new tech entrepreneurs uh, coming to build on. And we've been very laser focused on bringing this, uh, these uh, integrations live to, uh, to site and um, actually working with them and supporting them on their path. So for the past two months, we've actually had uh, more than 630 signups to the early access program. Uh, of which uh, we are working uh, tirelessly to on uh, 37 qualified leads. These are projects that we have basically been engaging with, have been discussing uh, and assessing what is the best integration for them, and then supporting actually with uh, use case identification, with uh, the best um, uh, usage of orchestration for their needs. And from the 37 qualified leads, we're very happy to announce this week that we've uh, awarded the first grant to Contracts Finance. Um, it's a very new application that has uh, launched about four months ago on the Arbitrum uh, um, blockchain and have chosen, it's a, it's a DeFi yield optimizer that has chosen orchestration and uh, Agoric to actually go multi-chain and include cross-chain seamless transactions on, on their application. Um, so a bit more information. This is, this is very much uh, uh, fresh information from, from this week. We have been yet uh, uh, communicating it. So preview for the community. Um, and uh, stay tuned. This week, we are going to communicate more about contracts finance and our partnership with um, What's next? We have a very busy uh, marketing agenda for and just covering things until the end of the year. Uh, we are already preparing also 2025, but uh, the big things that always take, take time and occupy our agenda are uh, our brand efforts. Um, they will be even more present into, um, into the media. Um, you will soon see a big campaign with Milk Road starting again, uh, following the success from uh, July, August, and then uh, events. We'll be, we'll be present at a lot of the events covering the tracks. Uh, we'll be in Singapore. Um, we are uh, co-sponsoring co the um, uh, Crypto Abstract Day with Octo um, from, uh, by DCK, which is the biggest uh, crypto exchange in India. Uh, we'll be co-sponsoring also the Abstract Day in Singapore, so a side event from Token 2049. And uh, we, are, we have, Dean will be a keynote speaker at a few uh, events in, uh, at Token 2049. Um, we'll be in New York for the Masari Main. Um, and uh, organizing a chain abstraction get around um, with a community out there. Um, we'll be in Cosmoverse, uh, in, in Dubai for the Cosmoverse, 
where we'll be um, participating in the HackMOS as actually co-sponsors, uh, and we will be co-sponsoring uh, the Cosmoverse as Diamond uh, Platinum members with DCF. Um, and then uh, moving onwards at the end of the year, uh, we plan to be in, uh, at DEF CON in Bangkok and uh, run some uh, applications. We are now uh, discussing with NIR uh, uh, co-sponsorship and then uh, we'll be present at the Indian block, India Blockchain Week. Um, a part of that, I think things that will interest the community are the um, launch of a rising um, educational uh, platform. It's a, it's a one of the biggest educational platforms coming from India, but with international experience um, and allowing us to take our uh, orchestration educational materials to uh, developers uh, and Web3 entrepreneurs and um, transforming that into a more programmatic approach to hackathons. Um, and finally, last but not least, actually the most important piece is that I'm very happy to announce that we are uh, launching the marketing. Uh, and for that, I wanted to um, introduce Miguel Romero, uh, our newest hire and uh, our community marketing lead that has just joined this week. Um, and Niv Aviram, uh, who is our head of business, development. He joined us for about two weeks only and already uh, he's hit the ground running and uh, running and uh, leading some of our best uh, partnerships. Um, Miguel, I'm going to give the microphone to you if you want to introduce yourself to the community. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you know, Yulia, thank you for the intro and thank you to the team and community for the warm welcome. You know, I'm excited to join the team here at Agoric. Um, I come from places like Kadena, uh, Gemini, Nifty Gateway. So I want to mention that this team is super locked in uh, to bring in so much to our community and especially myself ready to showcase all this hard work to all of you. Uh, so more importantly, you'll hear more from us about orchestration and the big role that that's going to play in enabling builders and, you know, you all listening right now uh, to continue to produce these you know, seamless experiences, as we mentioned before, in Web3 that, you know, otherwise are impossible to make in any other places. So I'm here. I'm ready to tell you how uh, we're going to make this possible. So, again, excited to, to be here. And, you know, I'm, I'm lurking in the Discord. I've been lurking for the last two weeks. So I've been seeing all the questions. So I'm excited here to, you know, help out the team and really bring our, our community back to life. Thank you, Miguel. I don't know if Niv is on the on the line, and if so, Niv, you can introduce yourself. Otherwise, I'm I'm happy to to introduce him. Um, Niv is coming from uh, uh, the Oasis Foundation, where he had business development, and previous to that, he was for six years at Consensus, uh, leading, uh, heading business development and strategy for them. So very excited to have him on board and lead our uh, big crypto partnerships. Thank you. Uh, and I think that Ant-Man or Roland is now taking the mic. Uh, sure. So I, I, I think Ant-Man had planned to give a, a quick product update, but given that I'm here for the okay. AMA, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, we, we have a, and, I, and I'll speak a little bit about this during the AMA, because I think a lot of questions have come in on this. Um, the core uh, product updates that are coming down the pike are Upgrade 17, um, which will include the, the orchestrator and a bunch of necessary upgrades to allow us to actually ship the orchestration APIs, which we are super, super excited about. Um, there have been some inter-protocol fixes that are uh, that have gone to chain, and uh, that has been something that the team has been working on. We also have some UI updates that, that uh, and, and UX improvements that went through there. And I've got a lot more to say about the roadmap, so I may, um, I may hold off on other things uh, pending that, but that's sort of the, the core of what's coming down the pipe. We are very, very excited to get our, our MVP of the orchestration APIs out. Um, and so, uh, JD, I think it, if you want to come in and, and do the AMA with me, happy to happy to 
uh, do that now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, thank you, Yulia, for the marketing updates. And welcome, Miguel. Great to have you on the team. Looking forward to working with you with the community. Um, so yeah, uh, as as last month, you know, we had some questions in the previous AMA that were better suited directed to Roland. So we've saved those questions, and this month we've brought Roland on for for the AMA. And uh, since it, you know, he just gave the update, uh, I think one of the the fitting question to start with is, when do you think we can get an updated roadmap? Uh, and so this is something that the product team is working on now. Uh, we're hoping to have that in, in the next couple weeks. And, I, and the only reason it's that long is we have a, a, a leadership team meeting next week, which will impact that. Um, but we're hoping to have that uh, shipped out to the community sometime soon. I think a, a, a related question is what's on the roadmap. And so that's something that's, that's easy to speak to, which is for, for most of this year, the Agoric team has really been focused on, on two pathways from the engineering side. One is in improving chain robustness um, and sort of ongoing performance updates, which mostly don't get talked about at this level uh, because they, they tend to be less, less user facing. Um, but then the other piece is shipping orchestration. And so as likely those of you on the call know, in July, we shipped the orchestration core update, which I think was upgrade 16, which was the, the, the critical connection between the JavaScript layer where, where developers are writing smart contracts and the chain layer where IBC um, messages get passed. And so that was the upgrade that allowed JavaScript contracts to speak IBC. Um, they would have needed to do it using low-level structures. It would have been more difficult to program. Um, there would have been error cases, but it would be it's the, the, the core enabler that allowed the platform to, to really start to allow for orchestration use cases to get built. And since then, what we have shipped uh, or what we have been building is the orchestration APIs that critically do um, core Cosmos level messaging across chains. So this is, this includes creating an account on a remote chain like Osmosis or Injective or Noble, uh, sending an IBC message both from the Agor chain to that chain or from that ICA on that uh, remote chain to some other chain, uh, sending a message using uh, packet 40 middleware, which means multiple hops of transfers, querying data from that chain. So using interchain queries to, to understand balance changes and things like that on the remote chain um, and more. And, and so those, those APIs have come together and are starting to get built into what we have been terming our, our orchestration example app, um, which will, will ship soon as well, which will be a user facing application that you can play with and click and, and sort of understand how all these, fun these things work. As a developer, you can dive into that and see how, not only play with it, but then go look at the code, see how it was done, that sort of thing. Simultaneously, we have also been working on, um, the DevRel team has really come to, developer relations team has really come together over the last several months. I, uh, I'm, I've lost track of time, but maybe two or three months, we've really improved the developer relations team um, in, in terms of just capacity and ability uh, with, with a couple cre critical hires. I see uh, Giovanni on the call here, and we have um, some excellent contractors that have come in as well um, to, to really start to drive better explanations of what we're building, uh, more example code. Um, that, that was the genesis of this orchestration example app. Uh, Giovanni has been leading that directly. Um, and then also working with partners to understand orchestration and also, you know, feedback, uh, provide feedback back to the product and engineering teams there. So that has been a big focus as well. As we start to look at a forward looking roadmap um, after the initial launch of the MVP of orchestration, which, again, is really focused on the IBC ecosystem. So uh, nearby chains, nearby meaning Cosmos largely that are connected by IBC have functions like ICA and ITQ that we can count on to give us this, this functionality, that, that is the MVP launch. And then we start to do two things. One, we, uh, from the platform side, we deepen what's possible with those connections. So for example, better notifications so that you could do uh, something like spin up an address on a remote chain that 
when assets come into it from anywhere, kick off a workflow that does something interesting, right? Uh, which again is something that doesn't exist in the crypto space. Um, but little building blocks like that can can uh, get built on top of the existing MVP. And then we also look to start extending towards EVM. Um, a, what we have found is that a lot of the partners that we've talked to that are interested in orchestration are actually in the EVM world. And so what we really want to be able to do is extend the orchestration APIs to EVM chains. Um, and the there's a bunch of different versions of that. And so the roadmap that we'll put out will sort of show you um, the progression of capabilities up to the final capability, which is to be able to allow developers to build experiences that let a user sign on an EVM L2 or something like that, and then move assets to another EVM chain without ever knowing that they're going to Cosmos or to Agoric. Um, so it would be EVM to EVM with an orchestration contract underneath that allows for sort of critical new capability. And that, you know, what we found in talking to partners is that the thing that really lights people's eyes up. Um, and so that's where we're targeting. Um, there's some nuance there um, and some additional projects that may get slotted in depending on priority, uh, which I can't say too much more about yet. Um, but that is the core direction of, of Agoric from a product and engineering standpoint right now is ship orchestration, deepen the capabilities and get to EVM. Um, after EVM is Solana uh, and then any other relevant chain or ecosystem that that we should target, which starts to be a conversation with with communities as we, we start to, to make choices there. Um, so that, that was a very long winded answer, but I, I wanted to I know the community has been asking for the roadmap. We've been a, a little heads down in, in trying to execute, but this is the direction that we're going. And it's it's been it's been clear for for a couple quarters uh, what we've been looking to do here. And yeah, thanks for that very detailed response, Roland. Um, as you, as you mentioned right at the end, the community has been very interested in an update on the roadmap, and I think you gave a very detailed outline of what we've been doing and what's to come. So thanks again. Um, through this, you mentioned the API, so I want to just ask a couple of the questions that are API related uh, while we're on the topic. So. <laughs> For projects on I, on IBC but do not support interchain accounts and interchain queries, can they use orchestration? Yes, though it it this is where we get into the nuance of the, of orchestration. Um, certain capabilities will probably require ICA and ICQ, uh, and so this starts to become you know as we identify those critical chains it starts to become a business development effort to go talk to those chains, make them understand, hey, uh, if you want additional volume to your app chain that could be driven programmatically through an org Agoric orchestration contract, then we need you to turn on ICA host and it needs to be at least this version. Um, it turns out that many chains already have ICA host um, because they needed to do it for liquid staking operations. For example, if you, if you see a stride liquid stake token, they do that through ICA. And so that means that that chain has ICA turned on. Chains are able to limit particular messages within ICA or particular capabilities. Uh, and so at that point, it's a it's a lower lift, but it, it still is a conversation to say, okay, you've got the staking operations turned on. Um, we'd like you to also turn on, you know, perhaps deposit or trade or, or swap or whatever it might be that, that we would want to orchestrate. Um, but again, that that's a pretty small upgrade for the chain to do. And so it's a matter of convincing the team that it's safe and interesting um, and that they should they should move forward with it. Um, so ho hopefully that gives the detail you wanted. Uh, it does turn out that many chains have ICA turned on. Many of them have ICA turned on with all messages enabled. And so there's there's no issue at all. And another API related question, and you also kind of touched on this topic. Um, can the orchestration API be used for, for the direction of IBC to EVM or only the direction from EVM to IBC? Uh, yes, absolutely both. Um, and so that's, you know, what one of the things we're doing is looking for builders that have use cases of these various flavors. Um, but think of it as the Agoric 
an agoric contract, what, what we're doing with orchestration is allowing a, an agoric contract running on the chain, which is a running process to own accounts on remote chains and then be able to send and receive uh, transactions from those accounts. And so, uh, and, and critically wake up and respond to events that happen that aren't driven by a user. So the contract itself can sort of orchestrate, so to speak, um, robust, complex, interesting functionality between chains without having to have a user intervene and do the manual bridging or sign a transaction to do one small part of a much longer flow, that sort of thing. And so that absolutely can include an, an ICA on anywhere in Cosmos sending assets over Axlar or some other bridge to EVM um, or an EVM transaction, uh, and again, this is this is the use case that's supported now. Both of these are where an EVM transaction could come into um, come into the Cosmos ecosystem again via Axlar or something else, and you could have an ICA that receives that those assets and then kicks off some other workflow as a result of that. Thanks, Matt. Um, I think everybody is going to be is excited for the EVM capability extension. Is that's just going to unlock so many new things. So, when do you think the API will be released? And what about permissionless smart contracts? Yes. Um. So, and I'm just going to look at our latest estimate just to make sure that it hasn't changed in the last day here. So, we have code complete expected on the API release. I'm going to I'm going to say in the next 2 weeks. That is that is our current estimate. And so that again, this is the MVP release of of the APIs. That puts them on target to go out this month. Um and so we're we're very excited about this. We know it's taken longer than we had hoped for, but uh we are we're so excited to get this out the door. Um that will be the V1 going live, you know, targeting September and, and again it it feels like that's converging. I don't think there are big unknowns remaining. I think everything is is just we, we need to, to complete all the work. Um, for permissionless contracts, the direction we'll likely go there is there are uh, the Agoric model, again, it, you know, I, I think it's, it's hard to really grasp how different the Agoric model is from most other blockchains, um, but contracts can be instantiated multiple times. So you can have a contract that's installed on the chain and then gets instantiated multiple times, possibly with different parameters, different different metadata, um, and and therefore doesn't need to be security reviewed multiple times, doesn't, you know, it, we, we sort of maintain the security properties from that original installation. And so that what that lets us do is approach permissionless in a way that, you know, you could have a token factory contract that then is the the instantiation for all meme coins or all token launches that that need to go out. You could have an NFT, a similar contract for NFT minting or for subscriptions or or things like that. And so the direction that we see um, this going is shipping a bunch of those core contracts, which then can be permissionly instantiated, permissionlessly instantiated, um, and gets most of the value of a permissionless chain without without sort of jumping the gun on security of allowing new code onto the chain that doesn't get reviewed, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and I would say if, if Dean's on the line, feel free to, to come in and add any context or detail there. But um, that's that's sort of our goal to get to permissionless as quickly as possible. And yeah, it makes sense. Security is of the utmost importance to these kinds of things. And I should say, um, and, and sorry to cut you off, uh, JD, I, I should also say that that also aligns well with orchestration because it, it wouldn't have to just be generic, you know, um, token minting contracts or things like that. We expect that there will probably be orchestrations that start to get very interesting as little building blocks that people want to, to mint new versions of. Um, and so as we are as we are shipping this platform functionality, we're also looking at, OK, what what are the, the pieces here that add up to a lot of different interesting applications that could go on chain and then pr get permissionlessly instantiated to, for example, uh, do easy onboarding for EVM chains, you know, for any asset from anywhere, that sort of thing. And yeah, I think we'll uh, let's stick to this orchestration topic now, shifting a bit from the API and the technicals and more on the concept of it. 
have you identified more use cases for orchestration that you can share and which chains would benefit most? Yes. Um, and, and so I know a lot of these, these questions came in early and I, and so I, I did sort of touch on this. My, my view still is that the, the biggest, the biggest um, market for this in the near term is EVM to EVM. Um, that will take us some time to, to fully get all that functionality out the door. Um, but I, I maintain that, that that looks like the largest opportunity. And where we've seen, I think where we've seen interest to start with is not necessarily where we will see the largest gain uh, in the midterm. But what we have largely seen when we, when we talk to projects is they're looking at what is my blocker right now, right? Like what is the thing that, I need to solve so that I can grow. And almost universally, what I have heard is asset onboarding, right? Like I'm a contract that's deployed on Arbitrum. I want somebody with their assets on base to be able to one click deposit or one click swap or one click, you know, buy my thing. And that, so that onboarding use case feels very universal, very, you know, very productizable um, and is something that orchestration can somewhat I don't want to say trivially because there's a lot of platform work that has to get, you know, has to get shipped in order to make it happen. But once that platform work is shipped, it's a pretty small contract. Um, you know, it's a maybe one or two swaps and a bridge and then one contract invocation. And so um, those are that's what has gotten me excited. And again, it, it sounds like a small use case, but everybody needs it. And it's something that you just can't do in crypto right now. So that's that's where I'm excited. I do expect that as the as this evolves, as people start to understand the power of it, we're going to start to see things that are more robust and more complex the way we sort of envision it, where, you know, I, I keep keep looking for someone that that wants to build a, a stable coin yield maximizer, which is just constantly rebalancing on its own. Those sorts of things um, will come later is my expectation. Great. And uh, I think we'll stick to uh, product related questions for the last, the, we'll take the last two and then we'll shift into the more dev rel, dev experience questions. Um, so when is Agoric considered a complete product in terms of core functionality? Complete product, what's that? Um, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, think, I think different, different products that go out will eventually um, converge such that we don't have significant new development happen on, happening on them. So for example, we might see that orchestration focused on Cosmos chains. We, you know, we ship a V1 and then we have a few more releases that deepen that functionality until it gets to the point where the marginal improvement is pretty small to do anything new to it. And so we're largely focused elsewhere. But you know, it's sort of like asking when are people on Ethereum going to stop building, or when are when are is the Solana Foundation going to stop, you know, building building Solana functionality? I, I I think it's unlikely that we will in the near term see Agoric feel like a complete product, and more that we will see parts of the Agoric platform mature such that they don't need so much active development and they aren't under uh, they are under so much flux. Um, and so maybe maybe that was the thrust of the question. Um, if I, I think we're not there yet, um, a, a bunch of making it easy to build, which I, I know is another question, it still still needs to get uh, addressed. And so we, we have a lot to do there. Um, I, I certainly expect that the Agoric engineering team has work to do for, for years ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry, couldn't find my mute button. Um, yeah. I, I think that it, it, that's a tricky question of when is a blockchain going to be complete. <laughs> um, so, uh, last one for product. Are there any products that can only be built on Agoric, similar to how some products can only be built on Solana? Yeah, I, I you know I remember that only possible on Solana slogan, and I I was kind of uh, half jokingly making a, a similar comment about orchestration uh, with the team quite a long time ago. I, I think orchestration really is that that unique thing, um, and and so that that is one of frankly, and this is something we 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 should ask for help from the community for, with is that's our challenge in explaining it to the market is that it is new. It is something where 
you know, the use cases that we've seen in crypto so far are limited by uh, the kinds of, of platforms that they were built on and the capabilities of those platforms. This is a new capability and building contracts that can easily control assets across multiple chains, wake up on their own to perform actions based on a timer, based on, you know, reacting to an Oracle of some kind, um, you start to have products that weren't possible on blockchain become possible. And so what, what, what is that thing that's going to make use of, of that capability? You know, we'll end up with ideas there, but I, I think, you know, it, it's sort of likely that the, the, the first really truly new interesting thing is going to come from a project team, not directly from us is my guess. Um, and so, you know, it, it's orchestration contracts. Those are those are what's only possible on Agoric, and that's why we've been so focused on that. And uh, actually, as you ended that, you touched on one of the other questions that I'll jump to. Would the Agoric team ever pivot to developing applications on Agoric instead of uh, core infrastructure? <laughs> so, you know... I think the way to frame my answer, I thought about this a little bit. The way to frame my answer is our our priority right now is driving activity to the chain, building building things or um, partnering with teams that are going to drive users, assets, transactions, um, controlled assets, cross chain orchestrations, all of those to the chain, and. Our, our plan and priority in Q3 has been to target third parties, larger third parties, uh, big and reputable crypto firms to partner and build um, those kinds of things out. It may turn out that in two quarters, we think that the best way to solve that problem, which is needing users and assets and transactions, is to just build a bunch of applications ourselves. You know, this is the conversation we've had internally before. Um, but right now, right now, that hasn't been our response to how do we how do we solve this problem? Um, and so I think the answer is, would we ever the answer to would we ever is, yes, we we possibly might. Um, that is not currently the plan. And then we've got one more that's sort of on the developer focus. Uh, how good is the developer experience on Agoric right now? Are builders having an easy time getting started in building? I see Giovanni on the call. Um, so Giovanni, feel free to, to chime in here. Uh, but I think we have done a bunch of work uh, on the DevRel side starting in fall of last year to improve the getting started experience on Agoric. And so that page uh, in our documentation got redone in, in Q4 last year, or Q1, and um, was a big improvement. So we moved from something that was a little bit inscrutable to, okay, I can get my system up and running in, in like an hour um, or possibly a little less. And that has continued to improve. You know, the challenge that we have had is that we, the Agoric system is complex to operate, to understand, um, and has a bunch of nuance in it. And so what we really need to do is continue focusing, being goal-oriented and focusing on how can a developer get up and running as quickly as possible and the things that we they might need to learn to do, you know, more complex, more difficult things we can save for later. And I, I would argue that we are sort of 30% of the way there on our journey. Um, that's my that's my estimation. I think we have a bunch of work to do there. Uh, and I see Giovanni has come up. Uh, Giovanni, feel free to chime in here on you know your your view, especially as someone that's joined you know in the grand scheme of things relatively recently. Um, and as a builder, you've got a, a more more direct view of this than me. Yeah, sure. And honestly, you did a, a great job answering that. It's not even much I can add here, but I will say that there's definitely a different paradigm, right? But that just speaks to the amount of work that the founders have done since they started this mission to solve some of the issues that plague not only just the Web3 industry, right, but Web2 as well. So I think the different paradigms really comes from that. But what I've personally found from all of the developers that I've been working with is how we fast track their experience in actually building something is they just use our example dApps and they just deep dive into those. And the beautiful part is 
the orchestration basic step that we have on GitHub right now, if anyone's interested, you can go check that out, um, along with the workshop that we did on it. When developers start using that, this whole concept of an orchestration API, it, it becomes demystified because now they're looking at lines of code that they can just copy and paste and then watch some clever cross-chain magic happen on a node on a seat on a set of nodes that they're running on their computer so now they can take these concepts they keep hearing about orchestration api this and that and now they can just run a line of code and watch a packet go back and forth between osmosis node and a agoric node on their computer and so for anyone in the audience who is wondering about you know how the experience is to develop on agoric i would say just jump right into the orchestration basics dap or the agoric basics app itself because this is the dap that we were pushing for developers to use to learn before we started doing the orchestration work and so by using these two dapps though i think that it greatly demystifies all of the clever work that i think has been done on the uh, on the platform since the founders began this mission yeah, thank thank you, Giovanni, and it, and I think that it underscores another effort that we we underwent with the redo of the getting started page, which was making sure that the example applications that developers are getting pointed to are not only sort of up to date with with new changes to the code and and not don't have anything stale, but are consistent with the examples that they're providing. And so, um, you know, all of our DevRel team as they've joined have provided really great input on, okay, I was trying to get up and running and this thing was confusing, or I, I got I got pointed to a repo that looked out of date and, it, and we managed to fix a whole lot of, of things that were causing developers to get hung up. Um, and so I think my view of this is that the early part of the funnel of getting getting started and getting um, uh, getting your system up and running and, and starting to do your first contract is in an, is in a much better spot right now we need to continue the emphasis on getting that better throughout the whole funnel all the way through mainnet deployment and that's something that we we have been focused on Uh, great. And thanks, Giovanni, for coming up and joining to share your insights on that. Um, so on this note, do you have updated plans to entice developers and businesses to use Agora? Uh, yes. And I think so. Uh, Yulia mentioned the early access program. We have a, a builders program that is sort of a little bit more all encompassing around developers that are coming in. Um, I think Yulia also mentioned that we are giving out our first grant or it appears that we are. And so um, that program is, is getting up and running as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, a, a lot has happened there over the last uh, month and a half as, you know, not only, um, you know, I, I think Yulia, you, you've only been here a few months as well. You know, key, key hires have been Yulia Giovanni and, and Niv on, on the BD side. And so, that team coming together to sort of drive this program has been really excellent. And we already have um, a bunch of folks that are in various stages of, of being evaluated or for either grants or other kinds of support from that program. And you kind of touch on one that was asked that is maybe more suited to somebody like Niv, but um, without giving anything away, do you have positive looking partnerships in the pipeline? Uh, yes, and I've been instructed that I can't I can't say anything more than that. Um, yes, so so our <laughs> I, I'm going to anyway. Uh, but I, I we we have spent a bunch of time this quarter on what are the larger what are the larger existing crypto projects or applications that could use orchestration such that we could make sure that the market understands its value. Uh, at the end of the day, what we want to be able to do is say orchestration solved a real problem for a real application with real users and look how look how important it was to that group right and so that's been our focus and that that's been both a product effort and a bd effort over over this quarter um i think you know we we likely have an announcement soon um which will be our our first example of that um uh, but several others that are sort of in discussions as well you know the I, the one thing that i will say is I've been at Agoric for four years. Talking with partnership with with partner teams around orchestration is really a, a, a clearly different 
and more interesting pitch to them um, than we were able to provide before with with something that was more around security, ease of build, that sort of thing that feels more nebulous. This this is product market fit in my mind, and what we need to do is make it real. And so I'm I'm excited for the next month. Thanks, and uh, that, that was. Uh, and all of your answers have been so detailed through this. It's been great. Uh, I think we can wrap up the questions with a few that are more just, you know, around your your vision uh, and uh, of, of Agoric. Uh, starting, you you say you've been here for four years. So uh, with that, what have been your big, biggest learnings working on Agoric? I mean, it's so many, right? Uh, some are industry related, some are just product functional related. It that's a hard question to answer. Um, I'm not sure I've got a good answer to that for that, honestly, JD. I think I think there have been so many, so many sort of individual lessons in in sort of shipping shipping products in crypto working in the space partnering with folks um building building from a fun you know doing product management from a functional perspective leading a product team doing devrel as well um yeah i, I don't have i don't have a single answer and and i think <laughs> you know it, it's all it's all really just sort of accumulated experience of operating in this space and in this kind of organization and in this industry. It's kind of asking you to sum up your four years here into one quick answer. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I should have prepped one, but I didn't, and I don't, I don't have one for that. Uh, so, so maybe similar but different. Uh, what gives you confidence Agoric will succeed in such an incredibly competitive landscape? Yeah, I, I, so I think this is this is a really important question um, because the landscape is competitive, and it's it's far more competitive than it was when I started here. And so you know we've watched that shift happen. Um, this really gets back to why orchestration, right? Um, what we were finding uh, in I, I think maybe last year at this time is. There were lots of projects that would come to us that we would talk to around, okay, we want to mint an NFT for ticketing, or we we want to do this thing that we could actually do on any blockchain. Um, you know, we could do it on Polygon, we could do it on Solana, we could do it on Ethereum L1, um, you know, we could do it on Agoric too. Like Agoric has that functionality and, and can do the things that other blockchains can do. Um, but what we were finding with those teams was they had no allegiance to us necessarily. They they weren't interested in in what Agoric was building. Um, they also were going to come down to who could give them the biggest grant. And those are the sorts of competitions that it didn't really make sense to be in. And when we when we really identified orchestration, for me the the aha moment was this is differentiation. This is what Agoric can do that nobody else can do. And these are the kinds of projects that will be really aligned with us because they see that. You know, if, if, they, if we have a project that needs orchestration, it's going to need what Agoric can do and it's gonna understand that it can't get it elsewhere because it's probably tried already. And so that is what, you know, that's what's given me, given me confidence and the ability for the, um, the Agoric team to align around that vision. And I think we kind of all came to it, maybe maybe together, but it, some of us in different ways, we all kind of saw the same problem and the same solution here. And so that that is where I have laid my hopes, is that we've got a, a clear differentiation here and we have project teams that need this. And so as we start to, to ship these out and, and see examples go live, um, that will be a, a wedge and a differentiator that, you know, I'm not worried about Ethereum copying it because they can't, or, you know, and again, I'm, I'm not an engineer, but if, if they could, it would be a, a significant, significant change to their model, right? And so um, I, I don't worry about competition there. All I worry about is, you know, how quickly can we, can we execute on it and uh, get those, those partner teams live? 
that sort of carries on what uh, Dean put a comment in the chat box, three impossible things from orchestration, multi-block operations, simple object-based control uh, of remote accounts, and extensible for async things, uh, such as third-party extensions. And I, I think that right at the end there, you just kind of emphasize that point of orchestration is solving some impossible elsewhere, or at least highly, highly improbable. Um, so last one before, and then we'll start to wrap up. Where do you see Build and Agoric in the next 12 to 24 months? Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm not going to speak about, I don't make build price predictions. I, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I see Agoric as in in the, and I think the question is sort of 3, 6, 12, and 24. Um, three, is, 3 is harder to know. 6 and 12 need to be orchestration is out there solving real real use cases with real volume for important partners um, and that we see a growing developer community that understands what they can build here and why it's different um, and is able to build and deploy with minimal support from Agoric Opco. Uh, those, are, those are all of our core goals. And so, uh, you know, I, I think achieving those is going to be necessary. And so that's, that's where I, I see Agoric going um, and it, you know, I, I again, I, I won't, I won't talk about the build token. Thanks for that. And yeah, as we're coming up on the hour, I think we'll wrap up. Uh, Roland, do you have any last comments? Anything you weren't asked that maybe you came prepared to answer that you'd like to add? No, I, I think the, you know these were all good questions, and and um, I, I will say I, I know I gave a, a long roadmap update verbally, but we we still do owe the community a um, a, a tangible object that that shows the roadmap there, and so uh, that's on the product team to provide in the next couple of weeks here. We're all very excited for the next Roland's roadmap. Those are always great. <laughs> yeah, and it's worth it's worth mentioning. I uh, had a, a Twitter thread kind of written out, uh, but. We were about to do the API announcement, and so uh, I'll blame Yulia. I wasn't allowed to post it, and then uh, I deleted it from my drafts, and and it just I just never rewrote it. Uh, so I guess I guess it's like ninety five percent my fault. Um, but yeah, so so I apologize for not providing a, a nice little quarterly Twitter update. I I should have done that in Q three. Um, I suppose as we get towards the end of September, I'll do a Q three Q four one. And yeah, so thanks a lot, Roland, for the time and for all of the detailed response uh, responses. This was really great. Um, I hope everybody else enjoyed it as much as I did. I could listen to you talk all day. You've got a great voice for <laughs> uh, podcasts and interviews. Um, so so a yeah, great, a great face for radio. <laughs> um, yeah. So thanks again to everybody for tuning in today as well. Uh, we we you know, we do these as a way to engage more with the community, and all of these questions came directly from members of the community. So be sure to join us next month for uh, the next AMA uh, guest TBD, uh, and you'll see an announcement about that in it uh, as we have those plans set. And if you're going to be at Token 2049, keep an eye out for the team. Uh, the, there will be an agoric presence there. And uh, feel free to reach out and say hi and mingle with team members in person. So with that, we're going to wrap up and tune in. Uh, stay tuned for the recording to come to YouTube uh, shortly after this. Thanks again, everybody, and take care. <laughs>